I have a word this evening. <clears throat> the Lord put it on my heart uh, to ask you a question. And it's a question that most people overlook in the church. And the message is, are you comfortable? Are you comfortable? As, as people, we tend to have a level of comfort that we try to find and we try to stay at that level of comfort. Whether it be a church that you're going to and, you know, is the, is the air conditioning good enough? Is it, is it nice and comfortable in there? Are the seats nice and comfy? Will I have my seat that I sit in every time to come to? Uh, will the sermon only be an hour long? Because I don't want to go past an hour. You know, we have a comfort level that we look for even as we come into the church to worship. And uh, I think that as Christians, oftentimes when we're in those uncomfortable positions, that's when God wants to meet us. That's when he wants to come talk to us. You know, when pastor called everybody to the front, it's uncomfortable to come up here. It's uncomfortable to come knowing we're live, we're on camera, but y'all came. Y'all overcame that comfort, that discomfort, and came to the front. Oftentimes when I first became a Christian, I remember lifting my hands and wanting to lift my hands and praise God and just raise my hands and say glory to God. But I can remember I started off with one hand and then the next thing you know, I do too. And then I was raising them up and then the next thing I was untucking my shirt, I was raising my hand so high. But it becomes a comfort level that you, you have. And I think that sometimes uncomfortableness is a good thing and that we need to look for those times because oftentimes in the hard times, that's when God's there. That's when God comes to meet us. I know that I've been going through something for the last five years. And I haven't prayed like I've prayed in the last five years. Before that I was praying, but now I'm praying. And, and I think that that's a lot of times God's putting you through those things in order for you to, as I say, get a faith callus. So that when you, you have hard times, you can fall back on those moments when God was there for you. When you have those uncomfortable times, that's when God wants to meet you there. You know, it's uh, oftentimes, that's when we're praying. But oftentimes we're not praying the right things. We might go into a situation that God has us in. And the only reason we're praying is to ask, God, please take me out of this. God, get me out of this situation. And I posted something a while back, and there's two different ways you can ask the question. God, why do you have me doing, why do you have me here? Or God, why do you have me here? There's two different ways you can look at that. And oftentimes I think that we're looking at it the first way. And we're just wanting, God, just get me out of whatever you have me going through because it's too uncomfortable. I don't like it. And the whole time God's trying to show you something. But the whole time you're not focusing on what God's trying to show you. You just want out of the situation. You just want it to stop. So at that moment, you're praying, but you're praying fleshly prayers. And I think that God's pulling us in, pulling us in deeper and pulling us away from, from doing that. You know, if, when we want to go back to that, it's almost like, God, get me out of this situation and get me back to my lazy boy or get me back to my TV or get me back to whatever you're, you're, you're comfortable with. You know, like I said, it takes a lot. God wants so much more than what you're giving. And that's everybody. That's me. That's Pastor Michael. That's all of us. I'm not just speaking to you. I'm speaking to myself. Oftentimes I come up here and I know that God wants me to do more, wants me to do more. And I'm going to try. I'm going to do my best to do what God's asking me to do. Because I think that's in the moments when he wants us there. He wants us to do these things. You know, the comfortableness of the world and the comfortableness of the church, those are the same reasons people are going to take the mark. So when the Antichrist comes, he's going to offer a comfort. He's going to offer a, a false peace, a false whatever. And those are the reasons why everybody's going to do it. I have to, I had to take the mark because I wanted to eat. We won't be able to buy or sell unless you take the mark. It's going to become very, very uncomfortable after the Antichrist comes. Right now it's comfortable. Right now it's easy. This is where it's easy. But after he comes, and he's coming, because we can look at the world and see it's falling apart. I want to tell you right now, I believe that we're the generation. I told a family member that today. We're that generation. We're the one. We're the ones. Jesus is coming, and I think we're going to see it. It's all setting up, right? Am I just the only one seeing it? 
Do, did God just give me the spirit to see it? No. Yeah, anybody can look at the TV and see it, right? I have people that are semi-religious talking to me all the time about it. They got questions. They want to know what's going on. I guarantee you atheists out there know that something's coming. Something big is coming. Jesus is coming. That's the something big. That's the uncomfortable. That's coming. It's uncomfortable for a lot of people that aren't in Christ. For us, it's a comfortable situation. I know where I'm going. I know what I got to do. I know that this is the moment for us. This is it. I mean, we've all talked about that he's coming, he's coming, he's coming. Doesn't it seem like he's coming? All you got to do is turn the TV on. All you got to do is see what's going on. You know, when I talk about the, the comfortableness that we all live in, and a lot of us as Christians, we don't think about the things that are going on overseas. We don't think about those things. Because oftentimes we can turn the TV off because it makes you feel uncomfortable. When you see that, that whatever you're seeing on the internet, you can swipe and get away from it because it's too uncomfortable. You don't want to see that. But guess what? The message that I'm giving to you right now, the people that were living in Israel before this all happened, they were very, very comfortable. They were all comfortable. They were living comfortable lives. And like that, it was gone and their comfortableness was gone and I want to tell you that our comfortableness can be gone that quick in this country this country could be just like that uncomfortable and very very uncomfortable so you have to be in Christ to understand that those uncomfortable situations you can't get through them the only way you're going to get through them is with Christ I think that when I came to this church I could have easily just sat in the pews. I could have easily, because what I did when I came in here, I talked to the pastor and I said, hey, I was a usher at my other church for uh, 10 years. And, uh, you know, I just was offering myself to be an usher. And I know that I know that the Lord spoke to me and told me, you're not going to hide behind being an usher. You're not going to do that. And I had to step out of my comfort zone. First time I ever spoke in front of crowds. I don't like to speak in front of crowds. First time I ever spoke in front of a crowd was up here when I gave my testimony. I never did that at the other church. I never had the opportunity to do that. None of that. I would speak to people, but I never had an opportunity to do this on a pulpit platform where I could speak the Word of God. And when I did it, I knew that God touched my heart and said, that's what you're supposed to be doing. This is where you're at. This is, you're not an usher. You're not an usher. Usher was comfortable. Ushers where I'm not saying taking anything away from the ushers. You understand what I'm saying? But God stepped me to a bigger spot. My point to tell you today is God has a bigger spot for you. But you can sit in the pews just as I could have done. You could sit there, but ask God what you need to be doing. Because he's pushing you, especially right now. The time is drawing near. The Bible says there will come a day when no one can work. When no one can work. That means now's the time. Today's the day of salvation. That salvation is for you too. And your salvation includes doing what God's asking you to do. Not just sitting in the pews. We have to listen to the voice of God and find out what he wants you to do. Amen. Also too, I want to say that uh, I was talking to a brother in Christ uh, on Sunday and I told him to pray for me. And he says, why? And I said, because I, I still get nervous when I come up here. He's like, what? You still get nervous? And I said, yes. And I said, I want to tell everybody in here tonight I pray to God that he never takes that nervousness away from me. Never. I want to be nervous every time I come up here. Because I want to know that in my flesh, I couldn't do this. And that God did this. That this was God. Because in my flesh, I don't, I have to convince myself that I can do this when I get up here. So when I get out of here and somebody comes up to me and says, that was a good message. That was for you. That was him. He did that. I didn't do that. I couldn't do it. I was too nervous. So the best thing for me to do is to call on that every time I get up here. And I, and I pray to God he never takes that away from me. I never want to come up here and just be like, this is just something I just can do like that. And I do want to tell you this. The Lord has helped me to get messages together a lot better than what I was doing. When we used to do st uh, stuff in the beginning up here, even the round table, it would take me a week to get... I'd be back there for, in, for hours just, you know, and, uh, and pastor would tell me, don't write so many notes. Why are you writing all those notes? And I'd be like, I got to, you know what I mean? I got to. I'd have a book of notes just for, you know, 10 minutes of words. But 
that's how I used to do it. But the Lord has helped me with that. Now, I know that that's the Lord helping me with that. I'll take that. But the nervousness I get before I come up here, I want that to come every time. Because I want to know that God did this battle. God won this battle when I come up here. Amen? Amen. So I want to read to you a scripture tonight. It's in Matthew 16, 24 through 26. Take up the cross and follow him. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whomever desires to save his life will lose it, but whomever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what is it for what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? What will he give? What comfort will he give for that? What comfort will he hold on to for his soul? What is that? When we talk about this, the Bible says he must deny himself. You must deny yourself. Denying yourself is uncomfortable. Denying yourself to do things is uncomfortable. When we fast, what are we doing? We're denying our flesh and seeking God with our spirit. That is denying yourself. That's part of this. That's what's required for you to do. And I told pastor and I'll tell y'all, I believe that fasting and praying is preparing us for times that are hard. I believe that God will prepare you if there is a famine, if there is these things, or if there is this stuff coming upon us. If we are used to praying and going without, then we don't have to run to them and say, gimme, 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 gimme. And them say, well, you have to do this in order to get. But if you're in prayer and fasting, God's preparing his people for that time so that you can be a little uncomfortable and still be in Christ. You can be a little uncomfortable and still be in his word. And I want to tell you that when you get hungry and you do pray and you are fasting, get in his word. Because it's the bread of life. It'll feed you. It'll help you. You won't be hungry. So as you're fasting, as I told you before, if you're fasting without praying, you're just on a diet. That's all you're doing. You must be praying when you do this. That's what it's about. Also, too, it says take up his cross. As I've told you before, our society's idea of a cross is a little gold cross that you wear around your neck. That's not the cross. That's not the cross they put on Jesus. Jesus was put on a wooden, splintered, bloody cross. And he was hung on there for that. To die. To bleed to death. That's the cross. Where they ripped out his beard and put a crown of thorns on his head. They beat him, they spit on him, and they put him up there naked. So he could be ashamed. That's the cross. That's the cross you bury. Now what's different from your cross than Jesus' cross? Yours is a lot lighter. And it doesn't hurt that bad. That's the difference you're making your cross. But the cross hasn't changed. You changed it. You changed it. We need to understand what Jesus wants us to do. There's a difficult times coming ahead. And as a church, this church will hear my words. And this church will be ready. Other churches, I don't know what they're hearing. But this church, y'all need to be prepared. You need to know that that cross is heavy and it's splintered. It hurts your back when you carry it. But we're told to carry it. We're told to do these things. Now, oftentimes, you have family members that want to get on your cross and let you carry it. And they're going to get to heaven through what you're doing. That's nonsense. The Bible says carry your own cross. There's a lot of family members out there that are thinking, well, I have a cousin or I have a grandma or whatever that is this or that. No. When you stand before God, you'll stand before God naked with nobody around you. Unless you're covered with the blood of Christ, then you'll be covered in righteousness. But other than that, you're going to be up there alone. I can't ask Kimberly to go up to the cross with me or go stand before Jesus with me. This is my walk. She has to have her own walk. And my children too. They have to have their own walk. I can't do it for them. I have a word for you today. A comfortable church is a complacent church. Because that's what we have in the world today. The world, there's too many churches out here that they make it way too comfortable. I had somebody call me this past week on Monday. And they were so upset. Because the church they went to didn't mention a thing about Israel. 
the whole way to the church she was talking to her daughter telling her we got to pray for Israel this is what Israel is this is why we're going to go to church we're going to go there we're going to pray for Israel she gets to the church not one mention of Israel not one thing about pray for Israel nothing and pastor's message on Sunday was when Monday comes around listen to these other churches and see what they're talking about what are they talking about nonsense nonsense they're getting their churches ready for what the picnic that's coming up on Sunday the, the, the groups that they have something silly instead of telling them what's coming and what's going on in Israel those are important things here's what the church also does so the church will come in and they'll say oh no I can't get in that water that's too hot oh I can't get in there oh, okay let me try this one. Oh no that's too cold I can't get in there let me get in this one. Oh, that one's lukewarm that's right that feels comfortable that's where I want to be the other ones are too hot and too cold so we like the lukewarm comfortable church that's where we want to be and God's not calling you to be there he's saying what if you're in that lukewarm medium warm church that's where he spews you out of his mouth I don't want to be in that church I don't want to be in that church that he spews out of his mouth the Bible tells you to get out of her run away from stuff like that run away from the false prophets now's the time that the Spirit of God is going to start pouring upon people so that they can see what's going on in these churches it has to be it has to be the time where God's gonna start speaking to us he's gonna start to give us visions and dreams we're gonna start prophesying it's going to happen this is the time believe it Amen. believe it this is the time and as I tell pastor I said it says old men have dreams and young men have visions and I think he's gonna have dreams and I'm gonna have visions but I don't know about that but I just want to say look just be ready right now be ready because now is the time like nobody's ever seen before <sighs> when you have that lukewarmness and you become comfortable at that point sin becomes comfortable sin becomes something that you don't even look at you don't have you don't have any kind of discernment you don't have anything that's that's going to show you that I shouldn't be here so that's when things start to get involved with us lust you can be in lust and it doesn't bother you you can be in a bar a club whatever you want to call it and it doesn't bother you gossip because that even goes on in the churches you can be in gossip and not even recognize it that's where I'm saying the Spirit of God is going to start working on us you can be under false doctrine and not even recognize it that's why it's important for us to be in the Bible on our own not just me teaching you the Word of God not just Michael teaching you the Word of God know the Word of God know the Word of God if you don't ask ask somebody get in the Bible study do something get out of your comfort zone and find out what the Bible's telling you there's a lot of people that know the Bible but don't know Jesus they know religion but they don't know Jesus and that's my next thing is religion you can get yourself caught up in that you can get yourself in a place where you're in religion but you don't know Jesus at all and that's not Jesus that is nothing like Jesus now I want to talk to you about something I saw on, on uh, the internet <clears throat> it was a cartoon there was this church and Jesus is knocking on the door on the outside and the whole church on the inside is holding pushing against the door saying don't let him in he's gonna change everything I mean that's the truth right we don't want fool Jesus to come in because if the fool Jesus came in then man he turned this church upside down he's gonna change everything in here he's gonna change the doctrine he's gonna change the music what do you mean he's gonna change the music oh he's gonna get it to where the lights are gonna come on and you're gonna play normal music and you're not gonna have smoke machines and tell everybody that the Holy Spirit comes when the music comes on because I want to tell you if your church is telling you that that's nonsense music does not conjure up the Holy Spirit Amen. music doesn't do that music is for us to worship God but if you're using it and telling your church that oh here comes the Holy Spirit because the music is playing you're in the wrong church run and get out of that church while time is while you can run while you can I want to tell you that we have to understand that God is the potter we're the clay we come from the dirt we're the clay and God's gonna grab us he's gonna mold us he's gonna move us he's gonna smack us you ever seen people doing clay they're working it and they're working it hard that's what God wants to do with us but in the end and then he wants to put you in the fire and he wants you to burn for a little bit but in the end you're gonna come out of this wonderful masterpiece that God has for you that's the problem that we have 
when this is going on after this fire that's what is beautiful but you have to go through the pain and the uncomfortableness to get to that point the Bible says in Isaiah 125 I will turn my hand against you and I will burn away your dross completely I will remove all your impurities we understand that right that God wants to do that what happens to gold when they test it what do they do to gold they put acid on it they burn it they put it in the fire to see if there's impurities in it and that's what God wants to do he wants to take your impurities out of you and that's these uncomfortable moments and that's how he does that the problem is nobody wants to go through the fire nobody wants to go through the fire the fire is over there I don't want to go through there but what's God asking us to do walk to the fire go in the fire he'll be there with you he's the one that's going to give you the strength to go through it but oftentimes like I said it's more comfortable sitting in the pews it's more comfortable coming and listening to a message as long as it entertains me because I want an entertaining message I don't want a message that's not going to entertain me and that's what everybody's looking for instead of looking for the Word of God the Word of God is what feeds our soul the Word of God is what's in here that's what we need that's what we have to have oftentimes we might pray too, Lord help me to be like Jesus help me to be more like Jesus they crucified Jesus they killed him but we're to be more and more like Jesus going from glory to glory going from glory to glory that's what we're to do so listen as we're to be more like Jesus just understand that it's going to be it's going to be hard I'm not telling you it's not going to be hard but we have to do it in order to get to that place where God wants us because he wants you in a special place he has special things for you now look at Paul what about Paul's life Paul's one of my heroes he's one of the he's one of the ones I, I, I love to read his scriptures I love to read all his books that he has in there but what happened to Paul he got I wrote it down 40 minus 1 he had that three times that's how many times he got whooped 117 lashes he took 117 lashes by the time Paul was dead or he was walking the earth he was a one scar tissue that's what he was the Bible talks about a thorn that he had in his side it could have been one of his ribs popped out out of his skin because once you have something and they whip you and they whip you they whip you he didn't get whipped and then got whipped it probably went a year or two he healed and then they whipped him on top of those and they would take you and they would do 40 minus 1 so they do half on one side flip you over and they do the half on your chest now you don't think that one of those loose little whips went across his face you don't think one of those whips maybe hit his eye because he had eye problems but he did it he did it it was an uncomfortable situation but Paul knew what needed to be done he knew that in order to further the kingdom of God he had to keep moving on he looked at it as joy to suffer as Christ did do you look at it as joy to suffer do you look at it as this is something God's trying to teach me this is where I need to be I got to find out why God has me here we've all had those moments when God had us in some situations that we didn't think we can get through but God's gonna help you get through those situations amen so every person that was written in the Word of God was taken out of the comfort zone you look at Adam and Eve they had a comfort zone don't eat the, don't eat from that tree everything in here but when they told that tree it became uncomfortable every time they walked by it every time they saw it every time it became uncomfortable and God wanted them in that place so that they would draw near to him but they went to that place Abraham 80 years old left his own home to go somewhere he didn't even know where he was going all of them go through each person in the Bible and look that they were all taken out of their comfort zone they didn't just sit in their lazy boy and they didn't sit in the pews they got up and they did what God asked them to do and I think that God's asking all of us of what we should be doing and we should be doing more especially in this church we don't have workers like we need workers so the ones that are working take two jobs the ones that are working take three jobs the ones that aren't working find a job do something don't sit in the pews find out what you can do to help this church because if you believe in this church you're hearing the Word of God you know this is where God is coming to you and meeting you then do something get out of your comfort zone amen so what is getting out of your comfort zone it's obedience it's obedience that's what it all comes down to when God's asking you to do something and you do it 
That's what it all comes down to. The comfort zone, uncomfort zone, wherever you're at, God's calling you there. He's calling the believer to do things that he's called you to do. He's calling the unbeliever to make that final come to him. Because the unbeliever has a comfort zone that he's staying in, or she's staying in. And she needs to get out of that, and he needs to get out of that, and come follow Christ. It's not going to be easy, but it's going to be the best walk you ever did. You're not, your problems aren't going to go away, but Jesus is going to be there with you as you go through them. That's what this is about. That's what the comfort zone is. Now, we have to all understand that we all have a gift. We all have a gift. Everybody in this church, God's given a gift to. You have to find out what that is. Ask God what it is. It doesn't matter your age. It doesn't matter if you're young. It doesn't matter if you're old. It doesn't matter. God has given you a gift, and he wants you to use it. You just have to find out what that is and ask God what it is. And I know everybody's hearts are stirring because God's been talking to you all about this. I know he has. That he has something for you to do. You just have to find out what it is. Talk to him. Now to the non-believer, there's a gift for them too, correct? The gift of salvation. Because that's the gift that they can get. Each of us have a gift. As the believers, God gave them a gift. As a non-believer, God gave them Jesus. They just have to receive the gift. Gift is not something you earn. Not something you can get. Something that is given to them. And until people figure that out in the world, and I believe that we're going to get to a point where things are going to get worse and worse and worse, and you're going to have people coming to you asking you questions about what's going on. Have the answers. Have the answers. Know what to tell them. And if you don't, come to the pastors and talk to them. And invite them to church. A lot of people don't go to church because they're not invited. Just invite them. It's just a step. It's just asking them. And I think that's coming out of your comfort zone and asking somebody. And that's what we're to do. Now, my message today is to tell everybody to come out of their comfort zone. But I have one last scripture to leave you with. And it's Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's the only scripture you need to leave here with tonight. So whenever you get in your uncomfortable zone and you're like, I can't do this. I can't do this. That's the scripture you go to because he's going to give you the strength. He's going to help you to do it. As I came up here and I was nervous to come up here, did I do this in my strength? No. He gave me the strength. Christ gave me the strength to come up here and do this. Christ will give you the strength to whatever he's asking you to do. He's not going to tell you to do anything that you can't do. With him. There's a lot of things that a lot of us try to do without Christ. But if we do it with Christ, we can accomplish so much. This church can be so much more than what it is if we would just be obedient to what he's calling us to do. So that's my word to you tonight is to find out what God wants you to do. Get out of your comfort zone and find out what God wants you to do. Amen. Father, I just want to say thank you for this evening. Thank you for the word you gave me. Thank you for everything that's going on. And Lord, I just ask that uh, you continue to give us knowledge and help us tonight, Lord. Help us to be able to understand what you're trying to tell us, Lord. I ask you to draw each person in here near and even the ones online and let them know what you're asking them to do, Lord. Let them get involved in something and be a bigger part of what they are, Lord. I pray all this in Jesus' name. And don't forget the scripture that I gave you all before. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen.